All right, I am super excited about this video. We're partnering with my friends over at Jane Software today, and we're gonna talk all about insurance billing, not just information, but how you as a therapist can get started with doing your own billing through insurance. This is a topic that can be super overwhelming, super confusing, so much so that we either avoid it or we just wanna give up. You're gonna be much more empowered by the end of this video. I can guarantee you that. Empowered to know more about billing, how to bill, what to look for, that kind of thing. So I think you're gonna get a lot of value from this video. But if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs up button, but only if you want to. There is no pressure. So the first question we have to answer and get out of the way is what is insurance billing? Insurance billing is when you are paneled with an insurance company and you see a client who has that insurance and then you submit a claim for every visit that you see the client to the insurance provider so that the insurance provider can then review that claim and reimburse you according to the contract that you've signed. That's not very simple, right? Let me just break that down really quick. Number one, you're paneled with the insurance company, meaning you've contracted with them. You are a provider that has worked out an agreement with the insurer that says you will provide therapy and they will reimburse you a certain amount, right? That's called being credentialed. That's called being paneled. From there, you're going to probably start seeing clients who have that insurance. Let's pretend it's Cigna, for example. So you are on Cigna's panel and then a client with Cigna comes to you and says, hey, I want to see you for therapy. You say, okay. Yes, I'm in network with Cigna. Now you see that client for a session. Then you have to fill out a form, right? A claim form that you then submit to the insurance company. In this case, it would be Cigna. That form indicates how you saw the client, for how long, what the rate is. The insurance company reviews it, and then they will reimburse you if everything looks okay, right? And this is essentially how we do insurance billing. So in order to even begin submitting claims to the insurance company for therapy services that you render, you need to be what's called paneled or credentialed with the insurance company. And essentially that process is when you contact the insurance company. And so usually what you would do, you would say, hey, you know, I want to be paneled with Cigna or Aetna or whoever it may be. And you would go to their website for providers and you would probably fill out an application to be credentialed. They have different ways of doing it, um, but essentially you're filling out an application. And there's probably a couple applications. There might be an application for the actual insurer. So let's just use Cigna again for an example. And then you also need to fill out what's called the CAQH profile. Now I won't go into too much detail here. There's a lot of videos about that, but essentially what you're doing is you're filling out applications that the insurance company is then going to review to see if you can be a part of their panel. Now to be a part of their panel for some insurers like Cigna, for example, it's quite simple. They review the application and oftentimes they will get you up on their panel. Other panels are full or they're saturated in a particular area. So in New York, it's actually kind of difficult to get paneled with an insurer like Aetna because there's a lot of providers already on there. Now you can get credentialed either by doing it on your own or you can hire a company to help you. A lot of people choose this option because it is much easier and actually frees up your time to see more clients while you're getting credentialed. Regardless of which option you choose, credentialing does take a little bit of time. It can range anywhere from 90 days to uh, six months, depending on the insurer. And usually people hit some sort of snags, right? So either the insurance company doesn't get back to them or the insur or the application isn't filled out right. So it is a tedious process to get paneled. And as a part of that credentialing process or that paneling process, by the end of it, you come up with a contract. So what happens is the insurance company says, these are the services that you can provide. And just for simplicity, most of these are going to include like a 45 minute therapy session, a 60 minute therapy session, an intake, you know, this kind of thing. And in addition to that, they'll say that we will reimburse you X amount. Now this amount is going to vary depending on your credentials, where you're located. But at the end of the day, that contract after the whole entire application process is going to outline which therapy you do and how much they're going to reimburse you for that therapy. So then the next thing you want to do after getting credentialed is you want to make sure that you go into the insurance provider portals. All right. Now every insurer is going to have different portals. They're going to give you instructions in your contract. But for example, Cigna 
has what's called an Evernorth portal, right? You can log into that. Aetna has something called Availity. You can log into that. This is gonna be your best place for verifying insurance, right? So if a client comes to you and says, hey, I have this insurance, you know, I wanna be seen, and you say, yep, I'm in network, you have to be able to check those insurance benefits. Now you can make it the client's responsibility to check their benefits. However, it's a good idea to be able to check on your end as well, right? And so within Evernorth for Cigna, I can enter a client's details and verify their insurance benefits. Is there a copay? How much is it? Is there coinsurance? That kind of thing. And then with Aetna, Availity is their portal. You can do the same thing there, right? So making sure you have access to those portals just so you can check benefits, that's gonna be crucial. Uh, number two is you wanna sign up for what's called EFT. This stands for Electronic Funds Transfer. And this essentially allows the insurance company to reimburse you directly to your bank account. And this is usually activated inside the insurance provider portal. It's just a couple of buttons, maybe a simple application, no more than a couple minutes to do. Then this allows you to get paid directly to your bank account because you know what the alternative is? Checks. They will send you paper checks that you have to pick up, deposit. It's a nightmare. So be sure to sign up for EFT right away. It usually takes a couple of weeks to get that all activated. So I was actually gonna demonstrate how to do all this on my own in the Jane software, but someone from the team has actually volunteered to help us out. They're gonna walk us through everything you need to know about insurance billing inside of Jane software. Let's check it out. All right, let's get ourselves set up for insurance. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is head into our settings, and, and then we're gonna to want to head into locations. I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit here, and we're gonna to wanna to head into location. Once we're in locations, we're gonna be looking for a couple of things. So let's scroll down. We're gonna be looking for the location address and map filling in our location. No need for the map, of course, but we do wanna make sure our location is in there and using that location address for billing if that is the address we want to be using. And then we have our insurance information. So here is where we're gonna be inputting our group NPI number. Another really vital place that we want to be looking for in this insurance information is our place of service code. So in this case, in our demo clinic, we've got a 49 independent clinic. Another really popular one I see is home and office, but you have several options to choose from that will suit your personal needs. So now I'm going to go ahead and save. Next, we're going to be looking for our insurers. So let's scroll down the left hand side under billing. We're going to find our insurers and let's select that. Now, I've already gone ahead and set up Cigna, but let's take a look at how I set that up. So here I've used the same name for Cigna internally as I have for the legal name. Um, but if you would like to use maybe an abbreviation for the internal name, you absolutely can. I've also filled in the address and there are other options like adding in the portal URL for this insurer, treating CPT units as separate line items, and you can even have that the insurer submits the claims to secondary payers. This can be really helpful when um, using Medicare as the insurer. What I also want to draw our attention to is the payer ID. Now, again, if we go to select a payer, we do have quite an extensive list uh, that we can uh, select from. Although if you do not see that your particular payer ID from this list, no worries at all. You do have this text box where you can manually input that. And I've put in one as an example for us here, selected my insurance program, and now I can save. Now let's move on to setting up our clearinghouse. So I can scroll down that left-hand menu here, but I'm actually going to type in my search bar, my billing settings. What I'm looking for from this section is my insurance. There we go. So here is what we're looking for specifically, our clearinghouse. We can select from, again, a list here, uh, quite a bit shorter than our uh, payer ID, but we're going to select our insurer, and all of this information is going to compile, and that is going to be present when we do make our EDI files, CMS 1500 forms, to confirm the clearinghouse we're working with and save that billing information. Next on the list, we're gonna be setting up our fee schedule. Okay, scrolling down the left-hand side here again, under billing, I have my billing codes. Let's go right ahead and see what it looks like in there. When you're starting off fresh, you're not gonna have this list of already preset billing codes, but you are going to have access to the ICD-10 and CPT code libraries. 
And here we can come through and select our codes. So I'm gonna type in a code 90791. Perfect, there I have one and I'm gonna press assign rate. Now here I have the opportunity to set a default build amount. In this case, I'm gonna put $100, Ooh, not 1,000, 100. <laughs> And then from the allowed amount, I can type in uh, my particular allowed amounts either as a default up at the top or maybe specify if I know what my allowed amounts are based on insurer. So let's say for Cigna, that is going to be $60. I can go ahead and create that billing code. So here I have 90791. I can see my build amount is 100 and my allowed amount is 60. Now that is saved to my list of favorites and I can use that while I'm charting. One of the final stops that we're going to have on setting up the basics of our insurance is going to be in the staff profile. So let's head there. So now that I'm in my staff profile, I'm going to head us over to billing. Here in billing, I'm going to be able to set up my default claim information. So if I go ahead and view, I can see here my little star is telling me that this is a required field, and that's because this is my rendering provider NPI number. If I move through, these selections and these options, I'm gonna see several other items that I can fill in. Now, of course, we don't wanna fill in everything, but only those things that are required. Maybe we're billing under another person's name. Maybe we're actually um, a type one, and therefore the billing provider NPI is going to be located here as opposed to in the location settings. So all of these items that we need to confirm, uh, we can put into this area to make sure that when our data is being pulled for submission, it's being pulled correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and save here. So the really cool thing about this billing area is not only do we have our default claim information, what the majority of our insurers should be expecting, but we also have insurance specific claim information. So maybe for most of our insurance claims, we are a type two, but for Blue Cross Blue Shield, we're actually listed as a type one. We can confirm that in our insurance specific claim information. All right, so now we have our basics in place. Let's head into a patient's profile and see what it looks like to set up a policy manually. One of the last items that we need to set up when we want to submit a claim is to make sure that our patient has an insurance policy. So let's head over into patients. I've created Frankie Taylor. They are a new patient with us. And if I head into billing and then into insurance policies, I can create a new insurance policy for them. In this case, I'm going to select Blue Cross Blue Shield. Now, this is just one way that we can set up a policy, but I'm going to enter in a subscriber number as an example. We can put in our policy maximums, confirm if we are doing courtesy billing, enter in the current date of illness, as well as any default billing, diagnosis codes, co-pays, co-insurance, all really great stuff we can set up and save. Now, another way that we can set up an insurance policy on a patient's profile is by putting it on the intake form. Now, let's head over there. On the intake form, you can see that there is a tab called insurance information. Now, if I include insurance information uh, onto the intake form, I can also ask for things like a requirement for both the front and back of their insurance card, as well as for them to select the specific insurer that they're working with from my list and entering in plan group policy numbers, maybe making it a requirement. Once this information is filled out, a new policy will be populated onto the patient's profile. Okay, so now that we've put in all of this hard work to set up the base of being able to submit our claims, I'm actually going to take us to the end of our story, which is accepting an explanation of benefits or an EOB or a remittance in Jane. Okay, so now what we're looking for in billing is the remittances folder. So let's go through and take a peek. There we go. So now when it comes to remittances, we have a couple of options. If we're working with ClaimMD, these remittances are going to populate in here just like this, ready to go. But no worries if we're not working with ClaimMD and we're working with another clearinghouse, you have the capacity to upload that 830 file right into here and it will look exactly the same. So let's go ahead and take a view. I'm going to record that payment which has been registered um, by reading the information from that 835 file and from ClaimMD. 
So we're going to record the payment that we received. And now we're going to look at the responses. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and view the first one. So now we can take a look at our first response. So what we're looking to do is to confirm that the information being sent to us by the insurer matches up with what we have in the system, that everything aligns. Then we can make changes. Maybe if we wanted to um, collect this $1 or leave this $1 outstanding, for instance, you absolutely can. But once we're happy with the way that this looks, we can go ahead and apply those changes. And you can see it's now approved and paid and our little taskbar has gone up by one, which is kind of fun to look at. And then we can just continue on through the remainder of our responses until we're all cleared up. Okay, and welcome back to the schedule. So what we're gonna do now is fill in that middle portion between when we've set everything up when we've submitted, what does it actually look like when we are with a client? So I'm going to go ahead and use my little magnifying glass here to find a time where I can book a subsequent visit. Jane is letting me know that I have a 515 available here, so I'm going to select that one. And let's put Frankie in for that visit. Now I can see here that there is an insurance policy, that Blue Cross Blue Shield, that I can apply. So I'm going to go ahead and select that during the booking portion and book the appointment. Amazing. Okay, so let's now scroll down to the insurance info. And there's a few ways that we can uh, accomplish this. So we can put in some insurance information by just typing in our code here, 90791, perfect. And then of course, adding in our diagnosis. Or if I remove this, I can actually edit my policy and add in those codes there, like we discussed earlier. But what I really want to show you is what it looks like when we are working through the day view, when we are charting. So there's a couple of ways we can chart, and I always prefer actually charting out of the day view. So if you see this little day button here, but just to keep everything a little bit more visible for us, I'm going to go into the booking info section here, into the chart space for Frankie, and let's get started. So new patient, I'm going to put in a comprehensive mental health, and what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to add in my billing and diagnosis codes directly into my chart. So putting in that 90791. And if you caught it, what I use to get that feature is using the pound symbol, not the hashtag. We won't say that. But let's say um, that's not the right symbol. There we go. That one. Let's say depressive. Okay. So now that I've got a couple of items in here, I can add in more to any of these text box areas. And then when I'm done, I can edit my billing codes. I can select all of the different ones that I've added. In this case, it's only two. So I'm going to select all and then update my billing. And you can see it lets me know appointment insurance info has been updated. I haven't even signed off on the chart yet. I'm just going to close this up for now. And we can see here that my codes are updated, okay? I'm also going to just really quickly pop in a copay directly from the appointment panel, not adding it into the policy. Now, when I go ahead and arrive my appointment, so when I arrive the appointment, I can see two invoices being created. One is gonna be $20 for Frankie's copay and for that patient responsibility. And then we're going to also have Blue Cross Blue Shield in the unsubmitted folder waiting for that submission. Now I can go ahead and pay, and I can take care of that patient responsibility. Let's say they're using my terminal today. Perfect. I'll pay an email. And there we go. We have our appointment all paid up, turns a nice dark green for us, lets us know the patient has paid, and we need to move on to the secondary, which is sending it off to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you ever have any more questions, we're always accessible, and we'd love to book a demo. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much. And so, yeah, that is pretty much the process of insurance billing inside of your practice management solution. As you can see with a solution like Jane, it makes things super easy. I hope today helps you along that learning curve that tends to be a little bit steep with insurance billing. I hope you found this information helpful. I hope you learned something. At the very least, I hope you were inspired to really thrive in your private practice. And if you're looking to get started with Jane, you can use code MatthewLCSW for a one-month grace period on your account. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you soon.